What is up guys, I'm Rick Kakis, and today we are going to be showcasing all three of the brand new exotic armor pieces added into Destiny 2 with the just arrived Season of the Splicer, and so let's get started. Now first things first, you're finally able to acquire these armor pieces today due to the fact that the Lost Sector rotation is finally featuring leg armor as a solo reward and all three of these exotics are legs so simply go into the lost sector if you do beat it solo you have a chance to get one of the new exotics on that corresponding character keep in mind that due to the fact that season of the splicer has a different leveling system whereas if you were in the pinnacle levels before you're going to be near the top of the pinnacle levels in this season it's going to be on light for a lot of people, so you don't have to put on such a hardcore loadout. For example, I was going in with the Lament functioning as my anti-barrier, a champion defeater, so you can do the same thing. The Ariana's Vow is a great option there, but I ended up just doing double primary with the corresponding anti-champion arounds and then just Anarchy, and it's pretty darn easy. Heck, if you're running Titan, for example, and you're using Thunder Crash with the Kurasa, the Falling Star exotic chess piece, you one-shot kill the boss at the end, so keep that in mind. But that is how to get them. Let's talk about what they do so you guys know which ones to farm for. Firstly, for the Warlock, we have the Boots of the Assembler. Now these say, Blessing of Order. Standing in a healing rift creates noble seekers that seek out allies uh, that are not in a rift and heal them. Standing in an empowering rift also creates noble seekers that grant both you and your ally a damage bonus. Each time a Noble Seeker finds one of your allies, the duration of your rift is briefly extended while you are standing in it. Okay, so a lot going on, but in game, this is what it looks like. If I put down this healing rift, as you can see, I now have those Noble Seekers, and they are pretty much identical to, if you remember, the Lumina hand, exotic hand cannon and the Noble Rounds that creates. It's very similar, so those are going to just seek forward and hit my nearby ally and heal him. And you can actually see here, in that process, my healing rift is still active. I'm, I'm still talking. It's still active. It's still, it does not go away. I'm telling you guys, the amount of time your healing rift lasts for when you are using this exotic is actually shocking. Like, you will by far get your healing rift back just in the time you're standing within the original healing rift. It's actually insane. Now, the Empowering Rift works in the same fashion. You can see I put it down and those Noble Seekers, instead of healing, they will give my ally and myself a damage boost and you can see my ally's gun glowing and he's gonna simply do more damage when he shoots. However, the Empowering Rift does not last anywhere near as long as the Healing Rift. It certainly lasts longer, but for whatever reason, the Healing Rift lasts an insane amount of time. And by the way, here's what it looks like to be on the receiving end of this. And as you can see right here, testing the distance to where the Noble Seekers will actually track you, it's pretty dang far, and I'm getting hit all the way over here. Now, something of note, actually, that we learned is that if you put a Well of Radiance down with these exotics, they will still work. You can see right here, I don't have a Rift, I just have the Well, and Noble Seekers are still going to my ally. Interestingly enough, however, it counts your Well of Radiance as an empowering rift. The Seekers are empowering Seekers, and you can see the gun glowing, and there's no healing going on uh, in this case. So that's a pretty interesting feature as well. Overall, this seems like a really impressive exotic for team play, and certainly how long it makes your healing rift last is pretty crazy. So, it is time, however, to move on from there to the Hunter exotics. So, these are called the Star Eater Scales, and the perk says 
Feast of Light, you gain additional super energy from orbs of power you pick up. While your super energy is full, picking up an orb of power overcharges your super, causing you to gain a burst of healing when cast and a bonus to your super damage. At maximum overcharge, you also gain an overshield. So, first things first, let's take a look at the orb generation. As you can see, I get a quick double kill here, I go and get the orb of power without having the exotics on, and it gives me just a little bit of a bump. Then if I put the exotics on, I get another double kill with my masterwork weapon, get another orb of power, you can see that there's definitely a little bit of an increase. I would say maybe 30% more super energy. It's hard to tell just by eyeballing it. It's certainly more, but it's also not like more than double, right? It's not insane. But over the course of a game, and certainly if you're playing PvE, this will add up and you will definitely get more supers. But again, that's only a small fraction of what's going on here. So once you do have your super, and again, this only triggers when you have full super and then you run over an orb of power, you can see I have a brand new buff, Feast of Light. And if I continue to collect orbs while having a full super, you can see that buff goes up to Feast of Light times two, then Feast of Light times three, and it's capped at Feast of Light times four. I couldn't get any more than Feast of Light times four. So this is the max, and as you can see, when I have this max and I pop my super, which is Golden Gun, I get that overshield. So I get shielded as a bonus for 15 seconds. Then when I hit this headshot, I do 1037 damage. Keep that number in mind. And I can do a little bit more damage because this does ramp up with this Golden Gun. And importantly, when I activated my super, the Feast of Light bonus went away, and when it was gone, I still got these damage increases over my base super. So that does mean for the entire duration of your super, you will get this damage increase, which is great. Now, to compare here, I'm going to use the same super, but without this new exotic equipped. And as you can see, I only hit for 650 damage. So that means that Feast of Light times 4 is giving you approximately a 60% damage bonus on that first shot, and that is nothing to scoff at. However, we went back and tested with only Feast of Light times 1, I hit the first shot for 977 damage. And that actually works out to almost exactly 50% more damage. So the difference between Feast of Light times 1 and times 4 is only that 10%, which means Feast of Light is very front-loaded. So you're really only getting the max benefit for the overshield. If you want the damage bonus, by far, you can just use Feast of Light times 1, and it's still going to give you a pretty substantial damage increase. But it's time to move on to the Titan exotics, and these, these are gonna make an impact in the meta. They're called the Path of Burning Steps, and they say that Firewalker grants solar final blows periodically grant you an escalating bonus to weapon damage. You are harder to slow or freeze with stasis, and when you break out, you take no damage from doing so, creating a burst of solar energy around yourself. So, when it comes to the just damage increase, as you can see right here, very importantly, I am using an Igneous Hammer. This is a solar 120 hand cannon, but my roll does not have anything that increases the damage. Normally, you want Rampage because 120 hand cannons take a damage increase so well, becoming two shot kills instead of a three shot kill. But as you can see, using my weapon, I get a kill and nothing happens. I get another kill, and then I get the Firewalker bonus for 10 seconds, and now I'm doing 108 damage, enough to two tap. So that is the first part of this exotic. When you get a kill with a solar weapon, you can randomly get this Firewalker buff that provides initially a 20% damage bonus. However, it turns out this buff stacks. As you can see right here, as I'm killing these opponents, I'm getting Firewalker times two, Firewalker times three. And it actually goes all the way up to Firewalker times four. And when you get times four, as you can see, my damage goes up to 122. 
So it goes up from a 20% damage increase to a 35% damage increase. However, if that wasn't good enough, things get really crazy when you involve stasis. So as you can see right here, if I get frozen and I break out, not only do I get that same Firewalker buff, so my damage is increased, but as you can see, I hurt enemies around me. So if I actually get unfrozen, if I break out twice in a row, as you can see, I kill nearby enemies because one does about half damage. But it turns out it's not just getting frozen. If you are affected by any stasis ability, so if I get hit with a shuriken, if I enter into a dust field, I get that firewalker buff, as you can see. And that means I get a damage bonus to my weapons, a 20% damage bonus, anytime I'm affected with a stasis ability. So this is the ultimate anti-stasis exotic. Guys, it is actually crazy how consistently this thing activates and it stacks. You can see right here, if I walk in and out of a dust field grenade, I go right to Firewalker times four. So not only are you turning the tides on opponents by suddenly getting a potentially a huge 35% damage increase if they try to hit you with stasis, but their stasis abilities are less effective on you when you're using these exotics. As you can see right here, if I'm not using these exotics and I stand in a dust field grenade for the entire time, I'm frozen by the end. But if I put them on and I get hit by the same dust field, not only do I not become frozen, but my stacks of slow are significantly less. You can see that same effect right here. When I'm hit with a shuriken, normally it lasts for around five seconds at 40 stacks of slow. If I have the exotics on, I only get 20 stacks of slow and it only lasts for about two seconds. So half the time I'm slowed. Guys, this is the ultimate anti-meta exotic. This is the answer to the current stasis meta if you're playing Titan. These are definitely the things you wanna grind for and holy crap, you're gonna be seeing these a lot. By the way, you can still run a stasis behemoth and use these. You can still freeze everyone you want while not getting frozen yourself, or if you do get frozen, getting all these benefits. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.